Let's have the difficult conversation regulation. I am pro some regulation. Okay, some. My issue with regulation is that we've seen in the last few weeks with everything to do with FTX, it is corrupt itself and can be co-opted by people with money. <laughs> Absolutely. But I think the fundamental ideas behind certain regulations are good. For example, I think regulation with regards to weapons are good to an extent. Okay, here in the US, you like your guns. In the UK, we don't. And I'm okay with both, right? But I don't think anyone here should be able to own a missile launcher or a tank or a nuclear weapon. Stay, I'm okay with this. Yeah, I know. I'm just okay with not with the idea of getting on a plane and not worrying there's some fucking idiot with a missile launcher wanting to take it down. I'm just kind of okay with that, right? <laughs> um, I'm okay with regulations with regards to the um, build out of nuclear power plants. They're probably a bit too regulated and makes it difficult to roll them out. But again, certain things with to do with you don't want the backyard SMR. Yeah, no, just yeah. Like I think you can have sensible conversations around regulations. Okay, what do we think of regulations with regards to Bitcoin and crypto? What do we think of the SEC having jurisdiction over securities? What do we think about the CFTC having uh, jurisdiction over? Uh, commodities. I don't know. I, I, I empathize with both sides of the argument. I empathize with people who are anti-regulation because it could be corrupted. But I empathize with people who are pro-regulation because they don't want to live in, a, in the Wild West. I, I get both sides of the argument. I think, personally, a certain amount of sensible regulation is okay. I think a certain amount of consumer protection is okay. I think we need to do a much better job, though, at prosecuting criminals who fraudulently, fraudulently destroy people's lives, okay? That, I think, absolutely we require. Now, I don't know the full answer to this. I don't know what regulation would have stopped FTX happening. Yeah, it was in the Bahamas, for one. Yeah. You know, it wasn't FTX QS, so it's, it's a hard question, right? Yeah. I think, uh, we, first of all, we will get big-time regulation. I think what just happened was like a, you know, like the stock market in whatever 1929 and we're we had all the regulation we have now is a result of that moment in in, in in securities and we just had our version of it i think it's that that big right well i think you can do a good comparison to 2008 you know with these mortgage-backed securities and yeah. we had we nearly collapsed the global economy well we did collapse the global economy and it pushed pushed the world in like i mean People lost, millions of people lost their homes, had their lives destroyed because the banks were reckless. The banks now have stress tests they have to follow. Now, some would say they're too stringent. Fine, I'm open to that argument. But they, those regulations were put in place for a reason to stop the banks over leveraging themselves and destroying the economy. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm, it's, not, it's outside of my expertise and I'm in the same position you are and I'm just not going to answer that. But I will say... What we have to keep in mind is that Bitcoin ultimately will threaten institutions of power. It's going to threaten, I don't think, you know, I'm with, I'm with the pro-dollar people. I don't think it threatens the dollar for decades, right? But ultimately, it does, it does threaten the ability of people to spy and censor on transactions. So whatever the answer to that question is, what I'm wary of is that rationale with protect consumers being a backdoor to the state, you know, doing what it wants to do, which is preserving power for itself against uh, against a threat, which is Bitcoin. And I'm on the side of Bitcoin in that one, right? So I'm just- With you, 100%. I'm just like watching out for that angle because you know it'll be there. You, here's, here's what's gonna happen, right? We know this will happen. Consumers are hurt, there's a lot of pain. People just want, actually, there's just so much pain. People just want to lash out and hurt back at this point. Of course. Right? And protect people. They just want to hurt people. And Bitcoin is going to, people are not going to distinguish Bitcoin from crypto. As much as we try to do that, as much as we need to seize this moment and do exactly that. And, you know, the Swan Conference was amazing in doing speaker after speaker, telling that story. But as much as we want to do that, realistically, no. The, uh, the public has been hurt 
they do not make the distinction. They're going to come after us with ridiculous regulation. And what we're going to have to do is figure out where the limits are. You know, this kind of like, we're not going to let unhosted wallets be regulated. We're, we don't want reporting requirements for individual citizens. We don't want something like FETI to be like I eliminated from possible, you know, being legal. We have to guard this regulation from being sweeping and we have to make it targeted. Like look at what actually happened and how people got ripped off. Is it securities masquerading as tokens and, and assets, you know, it, to, something they're not as non-securities? Well then close that loophole, you know, treat securities alike. Is it, is it exchanges not having proof of reserves? Okay, you know, regulate exchanges, but don't, don't try to kill a new and rising technology that threatens uh, you know, powerful institutions, banks, governments, simply because, you know, people got hurt in a, in a, in a retail investment setting, right? Like that, th that would be a huge, huge mistake. Well, it was more than a retail investment set. Retail yeah, yeah. It's institutions yeah. as well. Institutions yeah. got hurt. I mean, some of them, you, you have to blame them for their own due diligence. Sequoia, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I mean, fucking idiots there, honestly. You're just in following Sequoia in like oh, lemmings. my God. But also, actually, a bunch of people lost their jobs, have lost their jobs. And then they're not at fault for this. Not at all. And and I I don't want the individual retail Bitcoin user to be regulated and surveilled. But should an exchange be regulated in in having proof that it has the reserves to back the Bitcoin that is allowed to trade? I don't know. Is that a bad idea? Is I mean, that a good you idea? You have to think at the system level. So we already have we already have quite a lot of regulation around finance in the U.S. And so when people see a site that looks just like one of their other financial sites, you know, they just assume it's regulated in the same way. We're not in a, we're not in a vacuum. We're not thinking about this from the ground up. We have consumers who have expectations of protection, right? So that's the problem. It's like with like, <laughs> like Dave Portnoy saying like, where's my Bitcoin that I had on FTX? <laughs> like, how do I get it? Right. There's an expectation. It's with your safe moon, Mr. Portnoy. Exactly. There's an expectation that your money is there. Not that it's been re a like billion times and people are just gambling with it. You just have an IOU and you have nothing. Well, that expectation is the problem. And where does that expectation come from? Would people have had it in 1920? No, they actually didn't have that expectation because we didn't have regulation uh, we didn't have the, reg the regulation in the traditional financial system. So this is why it's tricky because th you want to think in this kind of clean sheet way, like philosophically, how should we build up the best system? But you can't because we're already in a world that's shaped by existing regulation. And the question is not what would the ideal system be? It's like, how do we best integrate this financial system into the traditional one? Yeah, my, my thing here isn't about uh, protecting the individual. There is enough education out there how to protect your Bitcoin as an individual level. It is systemic failure of Bitcoin caused by frauds, criminals, and liars. That is what I worry about. There's a systemic destruction of Bitcoin because of, you know, we, we may see other, there are rumors around Jump, rumors about Crypto.com, there's rumors about Huobi. There's, you know, if we keep seeing these exchanges fail, what is the systemic destruction that happens to Bitcoin? I, I, I can't. I can't go with this though, because I, because look, Chancellor on the brink, right? This is how we got started in Bitcoin. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not talking about a bailout here, right? But I'm talking about. So you imagine Satoshi's like, okay, I don't want bailouts, but I do want regulations so that this sort of thing never happened. Yeah, Lehman, but, you know, no, he wouldn't like that either. But maybe it isn't regulation. Maybe, it, maybe it is just doing a better job of enforcement on prosecuting criminals. I'm all I mean, for that. Because we have multiple people involved in three hours capital. And Luna's a tricky one. Obviously, it was fucking dumb, but I don't know if he knew how dumb it was. And he committed, I don't know if he was stupidity or a crime. I don't know the full details. Some people just say, yeah, it's a scam because everything's a scam. But three arrows capital and all the people involved at FTX at the highest level and Alameda who understood what's going on all need to go to jail. And I'm, I say that without any shame at all. No, no objection to They here. need to be behind bars. Bernie Madoff got 150 years in jail because he ruined the lives of multiple people. People committed suicide. Funds were destroyed. Uh, 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 retirements were destroyed. Operations that were meant to happen didn't happen. Like, 
the 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 contagion, the social contagion for people's lives with that was uh, terrible. And for him to spend the rest of his life and die in jail, kind of he earned that. He knew what he was doing. We need to see if I think if we see enforcement where people face serious jail term, that is gonna that is gonna create at least a fear for other people to commit the same crimes. You I, would hope. I honestly I, I agree with you entirely, but I don't agree with the last thing you said. Like what? I don't think that much I think I think that the ultimate urge to take people's money in the way that and, and to you know to to become a billionaire on a Ponzi setup is just too great. And even if the pun, even if the precedent is out there for going to jail, I think people are going to continue to do it. Okay, what about maybe we'll reduce the rate at which they do it? But like these these are psychopaths, man. These are these are psychopaths. What about the people giving them the money and, and enabling them? Should they face any consequences? You know, should That's Sequoia a- face consequences for enabling a crime by not performing the correct due diligence. Look, I know people are listening and be like, the fuck are you on about? But like, I'm just putting all those ideas on the table to say, what is the answer? And maybe the answer is Wild West. Right, fuck it. But is so, is that punishment not losing $200 million? <laughs> yeah, but they don't lose. These people but, are so fucking rich. They make so much money. That is just one failed investment. And they know eight out of 10 will fail and they'll hit the jackpot with one. And, and it's, a good, it's a good question to think about. I haven't really thought about that. I guess I'm thinking more... I mean, 2008 is what motivated me, actually. It was the lead up to 2008, seeing all my students go to Wall Street and then seeing the collapse and reading about it. Like I read the When Genius Failed about long-term capital management. And of course, I read the That's books the about, Enron one that came up yesterday. I haven't read the Enron book. Well, is it, that was, it's an, okay, because I <clears throat> raised the Enron one, um, the smartest guys in the room. Yeah. And somebody said you need to see When Genius Fails. It's uh, so good. But I thought that was about Enron as well. No, it's oh, about okay. long-term capital management, like multiple Nobel Prize winning economists who start a hedge fund and get over their skis and then have to be rescued by the Fed. They they thought they had a system. Yeah, they had a risk they had a risk model. Yeah. And basically when you get a risk model, this is kind of an insight I owe to the book and thinking about it, but also for to Nassim Taleb. Whenever you have a risk model and that justifies a certain amount of leverage, I think they were like 30 to 1 and long-term capital management or whatever. But whenever you justify a certain amount of leverage is still within a band of risk, your model has to take itself into account, right? The fact that you are now dumping tens of millions of dollars into a strategy changes the risk of that strategy. And that's kind of what wasn't in that kind of self, right? Uh, self, inclu- it wasn't self including. All right, sorry, I'm outside of <laughs> no, my no, specialty. Uh, yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, leverage seems to be one of the main issues here. It's leverage, which is causing a lot of the fucking problems. Yeah, it's the unwind of the leverage. So, so this is this is part of why I say like I I do have like a kind of I kind of want the wild west because this is what leverage does. We have a fiat created problem here. This problem isn't created by Bitcoin. Bitcoin is suffering the the fallout because it's a reserve asset within the crypto world, right? So then when people get in trouble, they dump their Bitcoin. So then the price of Bitcoin falls. So uh, weirdly, the fact that Bitcoin is dropping in this environment is evidence of the role that it, the functional role that it plays mm. in the crypto world as money, as a reserve currency, right? So it's like, and, and I expect it to keep falling if I had to guess, because I think the unwind hasn't happened, uh, hasn't hasn't finished, right? But I kind of want it to all go to shit. I don't want to save this system again, because leverage needs to wipe out. Like the, the whole system is corrupt, and it needs to blow up. We, what's the alternative? It's saving everything again, like the CZ putting together a fund to rescue. Yeah, everything, again, right? I don't. That's it's not like, what not what I'm talking like, about. I saw what he said. That to me seemed like a bit of a self own. It's like, hold on, why do you, you need? You have to rescue the thing you yeah. just destroyed. It's like kill yeah. someone, give them CPR. You well, know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> are you? Are you? Is that a signal? Are you? Have you got issues there over at Binance, EZ? Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, it's just but like, whatever. I'm not talking about bailouts. I right. do not I want know. bailouts. I want people prosecuted. I'm just wondering. Fraud if, is fraud. It yeah. needs to be punished. It needs to be well-defined. I is agree there, with that. Is there any regulation that would make the system better? And if there's none, but, fine. I'm sorry. How, how can you have any faith that the regulation would be good for us? 
Like that's the thing where I really struggle. I said, like, you can say you're pro-regulation and that's cool, but like I've got zero faith that it would be good regulation. Well, that's why I'm just asking the question, like, is there anything? It, it, I'm not saying let's have regulation. I'm saying, is there any? I is there to, anything? Yeah. Like, so for example, exchanges have KYC AML rules. I think that is bad regulation. I think that harms us all. Okay, so right. I, I'm not a, I'm not saying I'm pro what the regulation is now. I'm not saying I'm confident in people. I'm just asking the question, is there anything that could stop these psychopaths? I mean, if I were, and maybe there's not, maybe if, there's not. I mean, if I were Gary Gensler, I'd be really ashamed right now. I mean, you know, he's got his little victories of like prosecuting or <laughs> char charging like, uh, you know, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> like, it, that's who he went after. Not like he, he, he didn't go after the actual fraudsters. He went after like an influencer. And then that, that super polished video that he put out, which, which was so hard to watch. That was the hardest thing to watch since the, uh, uh, we're not, uh, we're all going to make it video by what's, uh, yeah. I mean the hard, like the next cringiest thing. Was that Mark Zuckerberg's sister? Mark Zuckerberg's sister. Like the next cringiest thing was. <coughs> have you seen that? I don't think oh I have. My God, have you not seen it? Don't look. Oh, exactly. come on, do it, do it. <laughs> Dude, we're not gonna here. Make, I yeah, can't, let's I can't do it. bear it. Let's do it. I can't actually bear to watch it. Have you seen this, Jeremy? Oh, my God. This is like the worst thing. And actually watching it after this collapse is going to be... Is this like a music video? Yeah. It's a music video. So this also points towards, there's, a, there's another Tyler? British football team called Crawley Town who were bought by a group. Of, yeah, and they called their group, we're all going to make it, and they bought Crawley Town, mm -hmm. who are a league football team. So we. Oh, I saw it. a story on that recently. Yeah, yeah fucking New York, story on it. New York Times. Yeah, New York Times story. They don't cover us. They didn't even mention you. I looked. I looked through the whole thing for Bedford and I did see it. Yeah, but to me, it's the it's the <laughs> it's the perfect mirror of Bitcoin and crypto. I know. Right? We are the Bitcoin team. We're top of the league. We're smashing it. They when when I looked, they were bottom of the league. All their fans hate them. They do. New York Times. Big New York Times story. Yeah. Media covers them as darlings, right? Motherfuckers. It was like amazing. Totally ignores Bedford. <laughs> Is this it? it? I don't this know. is not it. This okay. is not it. No. Okay. Search for um, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Wag me. I can't believe you're making me do this. I'm going to ruin your day. There It'll is. be traumatized. This is it. That's it. Oh, I'm, I can't I'm already done. Yeah, oh, go fuck yourself. Can we turn this off? No, you got you to watch a bit more. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my God, I can't do it. We got... Gensler <laughs> <laughs> yeah. video is, is a close second <laughs> to that. Yeah, um, I, I, I was traumatized for a little while, but they can sell phone with that. If we put that on the video, you know they get the copyright to, to this whole show. Do they? <laughs> ah, fuck it, they can have it, I don't care. <laughs> no, but I, so I, you're asking good questions. I will say this is exactly the kind of question the Bitcoin Policy Institute is like designed to answer. Yeah. It's just that I'm not the person to do it, but like we have, you know, legal econ policy people who who can weigh into the weeds and look at alternatives and say what's what's healthy and what would threaten Bitcoin's, you know, functionality and potential. So, you know, I, I think it's I think that's why we're partly really why we're built, not just to educate, but to evaluate policy proposals and you know, think them through.